Hey guys, this is Matt Invictus. Uh, these are my comic reviews for the 28th of February, 2018. So the first book I'll be talking about is Detective Comics, number 975. Now, this is a book that I dislike more than I like. I think it's done more bad than good, but it keeps getting opinions out of me. I keep finding myself talking about this book for some reason, because it it gets a reaction out of me. <laughs> That's what I'll say. So this issue that just came out, uh, I think it could be the best issue of this entire run. Now, this might come as a surprise because I said in the past that um, I, I do not like the current version of Batwoman at all. I think she is way too cold, like unsympathetic, unlikable. She just n not a fun character to read. So I, I, I just don't. She doesn't do anything for me. So th this arc, it's called The Trial of Batwoman. So you'd think that a storyline censored around Batwoman would turn me off. But the good thing about this uh, this single issue is that Batwoman is barely in it. She uh, There's a lot of uh, people in it talking about her, but uh, Batwoman herself only appears for like four pages. So that really worked in this book's favor. Um, and, and look, there's a lot wrong with this issue. Um, I'm not, it is by no means perfect. Um, Batman does not come off very well, and he, he comes off as kind of like a another unsympathetic jerk and um again uh, batwoman herself isn't it is only in it for like four pages but in the same pages she's not likable at all and this is right after she uh she killed clayface who is like um uh, the the best character in the series up until his death he's a character that like oh like had really grown on a lot of fans a lot of fans had come to like you know actually surprisingly attached to this former villain she just killed him for Admittedly understandable reasons, but but again, she seems barely remorseful about it. She's she's angsty, but it seems she's more upset about how she's being treated for killing this guy than the fact that she actually, that she actually did kill him. But so why do I like this uh, this issue so much? Because it has good bat family bonding, and when I say bat family, I don't mean some some bastardized version of the bat family where they just take a one or two. Of the of the most popular members, and then just fill it with a bunch of a uh, bunch of losers. Like a uh, they try and shoehorn in like a, a, a Scott Snyder's creations or or Batwoman or someone else. No, it's just it's Dick, Jason, Tim, Damien, and Babs getting in a with a pretty long sequence of them bonding. And, I, and I've said I don't I don't like the current version of a uh, Batgirl either. Barbara Gordon uh, ever since that uh, 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 the Burnside. Uh, era started. She hasn't done anything for me, but she's written fine here. I mean, she, she's kind of a bitch, kind of antagonistic, but but honestly, I, I like that uh, better than how she's usually written. So they, they actually, not, not only do we get to see like all the Robins and, uh, and and Batgirl bond, but they actually got their voices right. Like, you know, you, you got Tim Drake. He does not come off as a insufferably smug little douchebag in this. He actually reads pretty damn close to his old self. You got, you got Dick, he's in character, Jason, who's in character. Um, Damien doesn't doesn't really talk much in this issue, but the, the moments he does get to do something are fine. So, so it's just most pretty solidly written Bat Family stuff, and it's not amazing or anything, but in this in this era where we're just so starved for good Bat Family sequences, where it's always like, you know, corrupted by some uh, crappy Scott Snyder creation or or it's like some weird, some the, the way the Batman team in this Detective Comics run is weird. It's got all these like characters shoehorned in. It's just not as good as it could have been. But but this issue is just finally giving us something that fans have been begging for. Because when it comes to like the the, the Robins, DC is sitting on a gold mine. You got these great characters. They could be like doing some great stuff with them, but they keep messing it up. So, so this issue it feels like the the first. Oh, I almost forgot to mention. It contains a single panel of Dick Grayson and Tim Drake bonding. This is. I don't think we've actually seen something like this since the pre-Flashpoint days. I, I don't remember a single moment in the entirety of the New Fifty Two Rebirth where these two characters who are have well over like almost two decades of like you know friendship between them actually uh, bonding in, in a positive way. So that alone made this issue worthwhile for me. So, again, DC is sitting on a gold mine with the Robins, but they just refuse to tap it. So, 
that they really need to get their shit together when it comes to these eyes. But again, I am grateful to this issue, despite its problems, for finally giving us that. So, um, enough on that. Moving on to uh, The Flash number 41. Now, uh, when we left off with the fla the last issue of The Flash, uh, left off with the promise that um, Wally West was going to be uh, the main Flash of Central City for a time, since Barry has lost his powers. And if you're a if you're a Wally fan like me, I think you will find this to be another satisfying issue because he it does treat him like a like the main Flash. It, it, it treats I should say it treats him like a, as someone deserving of like being the main Flash. It, like it, it treats him as like you know powerful, competent hero. It, it doesn't um doesn't throw him under the bus to prop up anyone else. It doesn't like you know really mock him or anything. He he feels like a competent hero. It, it does a damn pretty damn good job of writing him. He feels feels like in character, feels like his old self, and um, I wouldn't say he takes over the book. It, honestly, he feels like more. It's more like he's like co-leads with Barry now. Um, if you're a Barry fan, you'll probably like that. If you're a, a, like me, you probably won't like that. But it's better than nothing. It wrote him competently and respectfully, and that's good enough at the moment. And uh. It also it contains a bit of that, like, a, I don't know, meta-commentary we've been seeing the past couple issues. you got some villains that are, like, talking about uh, real Wally, and he's like, oh, it's the imposter. He's just a sidekick, and he's just like, I am not a sidekick. So it's very on the nose, but I still got some satisfaction out of it. And um, and another uh, another thing about this, too, uh, I, I, I actually liked the, uh, the Chinese Flash, I forget her name, I liked her more than I thought I would. I mean, her design design needs work. It's they're doing that sort of um, androgynous thing that I can't stand. So so they need to bring like I don't know like Frank Cho or someone to work on her design. But character wise, I think she's okay. I think she has some uh, potential. I'd definitely rather read about her than a than a fake Wally. So so uh so, so yeah, it's a good a good good Wally West stuff. Um. It actually made me uh, grow on a character that I was unsure about. So um, I think that, uh, again, F Flash is starting to open up more, a bit more, to Wally West fans. It doesn't really give us much information about the the upcoming Flash War stuff, but um, hey, so what? It's a, it's a good read. I'd recommend it. And the last book I'll be talking about today is The Terrifics. So this is... Um, DC's like doing this new line of books called a uh, called the New Age of Heroes, and from the start, the Turfix was the only one out of all of them that I was interested in because this is um what what most of these books are. It's basically like um DC doing their own versions of Marvel uh, Marvel heroes. Like you got uh, this this guy called Damage. He's he's kind of like a stand-in for the Hulk. You got this guy called Sideways, like Spider Man. It's, it's like they're, they're all um like new characters. And this is I. I don't give a damn about any of these new guys. DC's got all these, like, you know, like, like great characters that I really like, a lot of fans really like, that they, they aren't just aren't doing doing anything meaningful with. So it's like, I, I just don't give a fuck about any of these new guys. But Terrific's caught my attention because what, what they're doing is, like, all right, is DC doing their own version of the Fantastic Four? Very, bla bla very blatantly so, but that's fine. But they're using characters that already exist. He got... Mr. Terrific, he's he's your Reed Richards stand-in. He's a cool guy. You got a uh, Metamorpho. He's our Benjamin Grimm. And then you got a uh, Plastic Man, who's um, who's like a is supposed to be the Human Torch. He's probably out of all of them, he's like the the analog that makes the least sense, but it's close enough, close enough. But uh, and then a uh, Phantom Lass, who uh, I'd never heard of up until this book came out because she's she's in the Legion of Superheroes, and I don't know much about the Legion of Superheroes at all, but but anyway, uh, a good team, mostly characters that I'm familiar with. I really like. And this is, the first issue is a um, basic setup issue. It's just the team getting together. Nothing, nothing great about it. But you know what? It's just a setup, and it does a, a fine job of it. So I think that uh, for, based on the fact that it's competently written, that it's uh, it's a good good premise. It's got a damn good premise, a lot of potential. So I think based on the quality of this uh, first issue and the the roster that this is definitely worth checking out and uh i also read the the first issue of the uh the mira miniseries today i liked it but there's not really anything for me to say about it just um it, it was good it, it's an okay book and i think you should read it too so so uh 
that's all. Thank you for watching and be sure to subscribe. Good night, everybody.